Bill O'Reilly here, Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening across our nation. President Biden moves forward on racial reparations. Ratings for the Golden Globes tumble to all-time lows. Some towns in California ban gas stations to combat climate change. Less than 1 in 20 Americans believe things are going well. A new survey says the most patriotic states in the nation are pretty surprising. Also ahead, did karma get Governor Cuomo? But first, the Biden administration confirming its plan to push financial reparations for black Americans during the president's first term. Senior advisor Cedric Richmond promoting the creation of a commission to investigate free college, cash payments, and other entitlements for the descendants of African slaves. That will certainly divide the American public. Ratings for the 78th Golden Globes are at historic lows. Viewership dropped 60 percent compared to last year. The show was boycotted in recent days for a lack of diversity. Just six million people watched, which, in my humble opinion, was six million too many. A handful of cities in the Bay Area banning the construction of new gas stations to fight global warming. Supporters say the policy will accelerate the transition to electric vehicles. Critics argue the ban will create long lines, higher prices, and even gas shortages for working class folks in San Francisco if there are any left. Just 5% of American adults believe things are going very well in the USA. New survey from CBS News says 4 in 10 believe the country is doing very badly. Biggest factors, of course, COVID, financial stress from COVID, chaotic politics, and the struggle to locate a vaccine. Recent poll from Wallet Hub ranks New Hampshire the most patriotic place in America. Wyoming, Idaho, Alaska, and Maryland round out the top five. Least proud state in the country, New Jersey. Uh Uh-oh. Regions are ranked by the amount given to charity, level of national pride, I don't know how you evaluate that, and the number of vets as a percentage of the population. To me, this is a completely bogus poll. In a moment, karma and Andrew Cuomo. Right back. Looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are seven reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund, and here they are. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized with bonuses up to 21%. They strategically choose low-risk, high-demand neighborhoods that people are moving to. Prime new construction is a sector that is short on supply and high on demand. Diversification and safety from stock market risk. They have a short and a long-term strategy for returns today and down the road. Pandemic-hardened specialty design buildings that are open and airy. If you've been sitting on the sidelines or if you want to diversify for safety and cash flow, start your due diligence at nria.net or please call 800-800-1414. That's 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. Did karma catch up with New York Governor Andrew Cuomo? Today, another woman says he acted inappropriately. And that's how these things go. One after the other after the other. But remember a couple of years ago, The brutal exposition played out on worldwide television. Judge Brett Kavanaugh rhetorically torn to pieces by ideologues who wanted him destroyed. A seat on the Supreme Court hung in the balance. And if Kavanaugh and his family had to be humiliated, so be it. President Donald Trump could not be allowed to put a traditionally minded judge on the court. A devoted liberal named Christine Blasey Ford supplied the allegation. Kavanaugh, she said, had sexually abused her when they were both teenagers. Ms. Ford produced scant evidence, but she had one thing more important than proof, 
a lockstep media, which would believe her no matter what. Enlisting a far-left Washington attorney, not paid for by Ms. Ford, she wove a tawdry tale, and the press printed every word of it. Of course, reasonable doubt quickly appeared, but to no avail, the media, many in Hollywood and the majority of Democrats in the Senate gleefully convicted Brett Kavanaugh, shamed him, described him as a heinous individual. In the end, the judge did ascend to the Supreme Court thanks to Republican senatorial votes, but just barely, and his family was badly battered. One of those who did convict Brett Kavanaugh was the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo. He demanded the judge take a lie detector test. Cuomo believed the victim. Well, karma is an interesting concept. Now, Andrew Cuomo stands accused, and his administration is tottering. Like Kavanaugh, the governor has denied any wrongdoing. But unlike the judge, the corporate media largely ignored the first story. Incredibly, on the day the first allegation came forth, the CBS, ABC, and NBC nightly newscasts did not mention it. MSNBC and CNN also declined to report the situation despite having hours of airtime to fill. But now, Democrats themselves are after Cuomo. So, magically, the story is being reported. This kind of blatant media corruption is common and undeniable. But here's the thing. The corporations that own the TV news agencies could not care less if they're corrupt. So what? We make money. All that matters. By the way, the champions of women everywhere, the New York Times initially ignored the story, but now they're driving it. It is clear the American people can no longer count on a fair press. As the Hunter Biden situation demonstrated, the corporate media has allied itself with the Democratic Party and in that capacity is quite willing to suppress and distort important information. As for Governor Cuomo, he has met karma and it has not been kind to him. The same thing will eventually happen to corrupt press people. Wait and see. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve that message by writing it. In a moment, something you might not know. Could COVID cost you your home? Cybercrime up 75%, and the most serious of all is home title theft. Bill O'Reilly here for Home Title Lock. That's right, cyber criminals, foreign and domestic, are after our homes, and it's easier than you think. Title documents to our homes are online now. The thief finds your home's title, forges your signature on a quit claim deed stating you sold your home to him. Then he takes out loans on your home and leaves you in debt. You won't even know it happening until late payment or eviction notices arrive. Insurance doesn't cover you, neither do common identity theft programs. That's why I protect my home with Home Title Lock. The instant Home Title Lock detects someone tampering with my home's title, they shut it down. So please go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim. Then use code RADIO to receive 30 free days of protection. Please go to HomeTitleLock.com. HomeTitleLock.com. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. 214 years ago today, the U.S. Congress abolished the importation of of new slaves. The decision ended two centuries of lucrative and savage slave trade, where millions of Africans were captured, detained, and shipped across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World. The first boatload of captives arrived at Jamestown, Virginia in August 1619. Eventually, new advances in cultivating tobacco caused the slave trade to explode. By the middle of the 18th century, slavery could be found in all 13 colonies and was at the core of the South's economy. By the American Revolution, roughly 3 million captive Africans had been brought to North America. In 1807, 
with a self-sustaining population of more than 4 million enslaved people in the South, some Southern congressmen joined with the North in voting to abolish the African trade because they didn't need any more people. On March 2nd, Congress approved the act, stating, quote, this prohibits the importation of slaves into any port or place within the jurisdiction of the United States from and after the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1,808. The bill was heavily promoted by President Thomas Jefferson, who wanted to prevent the spread of servitude to new lands. And here's something else you might not know. The new law had absolutely no effect on the domestic slave trade. I remember being in Charleston, South Carolina a year or so ago and standing there and looking at the manacles that held slaves when they were bid on. It was harrowing for me to see that. The widespread sale of human beings within the South was not prohibited just from overseas, and the children of enslaved people automatically became slaves. By the end of the Civil War in 1865, more than 12 million human beings had been shipped across the ocean as cargo. One million died during the voyage from Africa. I believe we can all agree the slave trade shames America and anyone who participated in it. Now this. How bad is your back, knee, or neck pain? Mine was pretty bad. I played four sports when I was younger, and uh, it's catching up with me now. I tried a lot of stuff to manage the pain. Ointments, pain relievers, fish oil, nothing worked. So a doctor friend of mine recommended Omega XL, and here's why. The underlying cause of painful, achy joints and muscles is inflammation. The key to knock down inflammation before it causes damage is backed by 35 years of research, and that's what Omega XL does. The doctor also says, quote, I can't write any prescription that comes close to what Omega XL accomplishes. She was right. So if you're suffering with painful, achy joints and muscles, stop wasting money and switch to Omega XL. Order Omega XL now and get a second bottle free. Visit OmegaXL.com slash bill, OmegaXL.com slash bill, or you can call 800-844-4888. 800-844-4888. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you. <laughs>